Hello and welcome to another video in this series where I am demonstrating the use of the Elastic Cluster Mechanism now available with WebLogic Server 12.2.1. This is part three of the series. In this particular video, I'm now going to demonstrate how we can scale a cluster up and down using this Elastic Scalability features in a truly automated manner. To perform the scaling operations, I will add a new diagnostic module that will look at, for this example, the amount of free memory available in the cluster. And if it is low, we will perform a scale out or a scale up operation. And if there is a reasonable amount of free memory across the cluster, then we will perform a scale down operation. I'll then add some load to the cluster and we will watch it as it scales up and down by adding or removing managed server instances. In order to add the load to the cluster, I have developed and deployed a small REST based service where I can ask for load to be added, I can ask for load to be uh, unremoved, I can perform a dump to remove all of the stored memory, and I can also um, force a, a garbage collection operation to take place. All right, with that, let's now jump into the actual mechanics of creating the modules and we can work our way through it. So here in front of me, I have the WebLogic Administration Console. Let's just take a look around at what the current configuration is. If I click into clusters, we can see that I have a cluster called Elastic Cluster. This is a dynamic cluster. If I look at some of the settings in terms of the dynamic nature of this, we can see that currently has a dynamic cluster size setting of 1, a max cluster size setting of 8, and a min cluster size setting of 1 as well. If we look down, we can see that we currently have one server allocated to this cluster, and the server's name is Elastic Cluster 1. It's listening on port 7101. So that's the state of my environment. If I click on the server tab, again this shows me the whole set of servers available in this domain. So I have my administration server and as you can see here I have the list of the uh, servers that have been created for my dynamic cluster. Alright, so what we want to do first is we want to go ahead and create a new diagnostic module. So we'll go through and do that now. Let's call it Elastic Cluster Demo. And what that's done is create a, a new diagnostic module that I can now go ahead and associate some policies and actions for. The first thing I'm going to do, however, so I don't forget, is I'm going to target it at the required environments. And we'll check to make sure that it's active. That's great. We'll now come into the policies and action section. So this basically enables me to set up some watches to determine um, if something needs to happen, for instance, we're looking at on a sampling rate the amount of available memory across the cluster and if a threshold is exceeded then a trigger will be activated and the associated policy action will take place. So first off, let's add a new policy that will enable us to scale up the cluster when we detect a low memory um, situation. We'll call it low memory scale up, as you can see, I might have done this before. All right, and here are the number of smart rules that are built into uh, WebLogic Server 1221 that I can use to short circuit uh, the creation of some of the, uh, the expressions that we need here. So you can see there's a large number of them here. What I'm really looking for now is I'm looking for cluster low average heap free percent. So I'm going to select that one there and what this is going to do is going to return true if a specified percentage of the servers in the cluster um, satisf satisfying the average heap free percent condition over some time intervals is larger than the specified amount. So I'll explain that as we get into it. So let's select that one. And here we can see we've got some nice documentation that describes what this particular smart rule will do. 
So let's fill out the values here. So here's the cluster I want to operate on. The sampling rate is the frequency at which the data is collected. So we're going to make that five seconds in this case. The sample retention period is the sliding window of time by which we'll actually make some observations and trigger an outcome or trigger the, uh, the threshold activity if um, the particular setting is exceeded. So we're going to make that 30 seconds in this case because we're working for a demo. The average heap-free percentage. So remember, we're looking for low memory usage at this point. So let's say if it gets below 25%, and let's say that it applies to 75% um, of the servers in my cluster. So what this will say is that across the servers in my cluster, if 75% of those servers have an average heap-free percentage of 25% or less, um, kick off the associated action for this policy. So we'll click next, we'll schedule it and we'll just follow the settings I've done it. I won't need to worry about an alarm. And here I can now configure the associated policy action. So here you can see I've got a couple of choices. I can scale it up or I can choose a scale down action. Let's add a new scale up option. So we'll call it low memory scale up. I want to enable it. And now we get to the point where the rubber meets the road. So here I'm saying when this action is activated, how much do I want to scale my cluster up by? So I'm going to leave it as one for this demo purposes. Click finish. Click finish. And we're now done. So if I look here, I've now got uh, a new WLDF module. And in it, I've got a policy that's looking at, uh, with a smart rule, the amount of memory used in the cluster. And I've got an action that will scale up the cluster size uh, if that policy is triggered. All right, so let's put it into work. What we'll come back in here and do is I will, because we expect to see a server scale up, I'm going to show the, the amount of the, the server instances that are currently available, and I'll get that into a reload mode. And now I'm going to flick through to um, my command line and also the Java mission control. So what we have here on the left is Java Mission Control connected to that current running managed server instance. And I'm actually watching the amount of used Java heap, uh, the Java memory, etc. What I have on the right here, what I have on the right here is just a command line uh, terminal, which is going to enable me to make calls into my REST service to add or uh, load the service up with additional memory. So, um, I've got them stored as variables at the moment. So S1, as a local variable, is um, a, a service endpoint, which is running on 7101, so that's my currently activated managed server. If I call that from curl, we can see that currently my memory set has got zero items in it, and I've got about 41% heap free. So now let's load it up with a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load it up and I'm going to add in, say, 64 megabytes. We can see now that I've created some, I've created some memory use in my managed server and we should now start to see the heap space be consumed. I will go in and add another 64 megabytes of memory use, and you can see now my heap space is about 38% free. If I go in and add, say, now another 64 meg of use, you can see that my heap space now is down to 25% free. So I'm right on the border of where that policy should kick in. If I go in and I want to add, let's just say, another 32 megabytes, we can see now that I've actually exceeded the threshold. So my used Java heap now is 83%, meaning I only have 17% uh, free, and I should see a scale-up operation be activated. And here we can see I've actually got a little bit of Apple script that's showing me what's happening there. So let's kick back into the administration console. Here we can see the administration console has just changed and now we have a new managed server instance that's been created and is automatically being started. So in effect the scale-up operation is now taking place.
and there it is, the server's now running. All right, what we can do from here is we can now add in a corresponding action to say that if the memory begins to free up across my cluster, I can actually scale the cluster down. So let's come back into our module, we'll add a new policy, we'll call it a high memory scale down. And this time I'm looking for a cluster with a high average heap free percent. And here it is, similar screen, so we'll set our sampling rate back to five seconds. We'll look for a retention period of 30. Let's say now we're looking for an average heap free percentage of, um, let's do 60, and we'll make it 50% um, of the servers just to force the action to happen. Click through. And now I'm looking for a scaled down action. So we'll do a new scaled down action. We'll do a high memory scale down. And we'll bring this cluster back by one managed server instance. Click finish. Click finish. And we can now see, looking at the policies, that I've got a high memory scale down and a low memory scale up policy and associated action. If we look back on our servers, we can see that I still have my two managed server instances running. So now if I come back in and I actually want to uh, remove some of the memory from the cluster, I can use my REST service again. I've got an option to dump the memory. And here we can see that the use Java heap on the first managed server instance has dropped down. I might do that on the second one just to force it. So there we can see that that's reduced the memory on the second server instance. So now we'll wait for the thresholds to be um, observed and my scale down policy should kick in. And there it is, there's my Apple scoop alert box and here we can see now that the scale operation is a scale down with one server and I'm going to remove elastic cluster too. Let's now go and check back in my server page. We'll put that back to refreshing. And there we can see that the um, action has taken place and my Elastic Cluster 2 is now shut down. So the amount of memory across and available in the cluster has increased. So you can think of that as representing load that's gone away and the cluster has scaled down accordingly. So there it is. Uh, that's the use of the WebLogic Elasticity feature set in action and how you go ahead and configure it. The last thing I'll show is for those with keen eyes, you may have noticed my little Apple script alert windows popping up. What we've got um, is the ability to provide interceptors that can either be data source based or script based uh, in this release of the product so that as your scale up or scale down operations are invoked, you can actually have it call out to a script. So I've got a preprocessor script here called scale operation. And in the scale operation script, um, I'm basically getting some of the environment variables that are being passed through from our orchestration framework and then calling the Apple script uh, scripting language to pop up an alert window to tell me what the scale up or scale down operation was and the number of servers and the, the target server that's going to be removed. So that's how that's all tied together. And this is what the script looks like. So just using the OSA script language and you can see that I'm actually getting the uh, environment variables that is being passed through to the script that allows me to see what operations being performed, the scaling size, the candidate members that are going to be affected. All right, so to summarize what we've seen here today is how the WebLogic Server 1221 elasticity feature works. 
I've created a module with some policies and some actions that enable a dynamic cluster to be automatically scaled up and scaled down in this example uh, based on the amount of memory available across the, the servers that are representing the cluster. All right, so thanks for watching um, and uh, good luck playing around with the new features in 12.2.1.